What's going on, arcade nerds? Ugh, we need to get this done! It's been a while. I have put it off for far too long. Um, it's getting that time of year where I, I want to get the, the car in the garage. So I need to get this thing done so I can, so I can get myself some garage space. Uh, so anyways, I went down to Harbor Freight and I picked up a, a belt for the belt sander. And I'm going to hit this with some 30, 32 get. 32 grit, 36 grit, forget what it was. And we're going to eat off this side art, and I'm going to do some Bondo work on the bottom, and so on. So, hopefully, in this video, we will have all the body work done, uh, and then maybe next video we'll apply the side art. I, I really don't know. We're going to play this by ear. But anyways, let's get started. Okay, the entire cabinet has been belt sanded. Now there are some stragglers with the side art, like right here. A few little spots like that all over the place. That's totally okay. Uh, remember, I hit this with a coarse grit paper. We're going we're to go over it with finer stuff, you know, so uh, all those little, little things will be, will be picked up. Now I did this. This isn't the best way to, this is not the best way to go about it. Uh, you know it, I know it, we all know this is not the best way to go about it. To be honest, the best way would probably be to cut above the damage, replace this entire piece of wood. But I, I am pretty damn good with Bondo, and I can do some, some magic with this. Um, some might see it as the hard way. I, I myself see it as the easy way, because I can't make a piece of wood cut straight to save my life. So, yes, I'm probably doing it the hard way, uh, but... Hey, this is just the best way the best way I can do it. I decided to just go with some rondo. So <clears throat> this is what I'm doing, everyone to each their own. But I got about that much resin on the bottom of the bucket here. This is fiberglass resin. This is what they use for uh, fixing fiberglass boats and working on corvettes and whatever. So I'm gonna stick some hardener in there. Oops. Poke a hole in this thing. Okay. So I'm going to put some hardener in. I'm going to mix this up. Pour a little bit of Bondo in it. Okay, that's a little bit of Bondo. Now, uh, when you're mixing Bondo, you really shouldn't do what I'm doing right here. What I'm doing is I am uh, stirring. You should never stir Bondo, but I'm doing it. Uh, the reason why is because you're trapping air bubbles. I really don't care about air bubbles in this situation because I'm just using this so it'll harden up this area here. We'll do a final coat later.
All right, so I'm just going to pour this crap out. Something like that. This stuff sucks right up into the wood. You can see it, see it absorbing into the wood already? It sucks into wood like water it goes into a sponge. <clears throat> Now when this dries, it'll actually be uh, less flexible and more brittle and more harder. Is that a word? More harder? It'll be harder than Bondo. Bondo kind of dries soft and rubbery. This gives it more of a hard plastic kind of feel if that makes sense. And it's harder to sand. Also, I don't know if you can tell or not in the picture, but I, uh, Use some paint stirring sticks on the sides to keep the Bondo from leaking out the sides. So, just as an, as an effort to uh, smooth out the body, I'm going to go ahead and dump this stuff all over the body too. I'm going to go the lightest, thinnest coat possible. Also, this stuff will not harden as fast as, as regular Bondo does. It takes about 10 times longer. But that's okay. You come back in a couple hours and it'll be, you know, harder than regular Bondo on its own. So I'm going to work this in. I should be able to work this in. As I play with it, it'll keep on absorbing into the wood and start disappearing, if that makes sense. So let me turn the camera off. Oh, I didn't even show you what I'm doing up here. Anyway, so let me turn the camera off. I'm just going to work this in. And, uh, you know, I'll turn the camera back on when uh, it starts to harden. Okay, so now it's sat for about, I don't know, let's say 15 minutes. And this is getting there. It's a little tacky, hot and hard. That did not sound good. When Bondo cures, or resin cures, it gets hot. So it's very hot right now. A little tacky, but it's getting, it's getting hard. Anyways, so... I'm gonna get my half-ass Bondo mixer out there. And, uh... Knife. And uh, while it's still curing and it's still tacky, I'm going to mix up some plain old Bondo to fill it in. Whenever this slow ass. Looks like that's a little much, but hey. You get the other side of the cabinet. Cool thing about Bondo is you can always sand it right back off. You screw up, whatever. I mean, I screw up all the time. I 
happy little mistakes. my air compressor sometimes it kicks on when there's the when it's half when the tank is half charged and it like wants to blow the breaker so let me get on the other side This is just a fill in. I know there's going to be more coats coming. Whatever's left over, I'm just going to smooth it out. So let's let that cure. And of course we're going to have to put yet another coat, two, three coats even, on top of that to smooth it out. Okay, it's been, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes again. And you see how all these, I have all these high spots? Now if I were to sand that, it would be a big problem, a big long project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rasp planer. I'm doing this obviously before the Bondo is totally set up. And that's going to knock off all the high spots so I can do my next coat. Okay, I kind of brought some Bondo all the way out here to smooth it out and overall we're actually pretty good but there are low spots so I need to do yet more coats of Bondo to fill in the low spots so that's what I'm gonna do okay so what I've done so far is I've put glazing putty over this whole area and then hit it with uh, 220 grit paper and a sander. <clears throat> now we're almost there. It's very, very smooth. But I can feel there's some imperfections. If I feel across, don't don't worry about different textures. Feel across for low spots and high spots. For example, right here is a low spot. And over here is a low spot. And right here is a low spot. So I have one, two, three low spots. Everything else is okay. There is a, there is a spot where, where like a screw head's coming through, but uh, I cannot feel it. As long as I can't feel it, I'm not worried about it. Anyways, glazing putty. You can get this stuff at an automotive store. And uh, Walmart sells it too. I'm going to put a little dab there. I'm 
I'm going to leave a little high because glazing putty sands pretty easy. Okay, we're going to leave it high. We can always sand it back off. I'm not sure if this is a low spot or not. I'm going to put some here too. What the hell? We can always sand it right back off. Yeah, glazing putty dries just as hard as Bondo, but it sands a little easier than Bondo, which is good. But yeah, if you use the glazing putty right over top of that coarse grit paper that I used, um, you can just skip right to 220. Right to 220 grit from 80 grit. No problem. And I can't feel anything. Trying to feel for something. This feels smooth, but I'm just going to put it on there just for the hell of it. Just because it looks ugly. I don't know. Now, if you get this on your finger, you can go over the corners. Let's see if I can get a picture of a corner. Now, the corners always like to tear up, right? And you want them, you want them as square as possible, right? I just get that with my finger. Put it right on the corner. Sometimes I'll get it like this and I'll move it down. <clears throat> There's an indentation. Here. And then, you know, that'll just sand right down with the sander. And this, this glazing putty, like right here, already, right here is already dry. Some of the deep spots, you gotta wait a little bit. You can hit it with a hair dryer if you want. Don't get it too hot because you'll make the uh, surface underneath it expand and gas out, of course. So, what I think we're gonna do is I'm just gonna glazing, put some glazing putty all over the entire cabinet. I think this will be my final finish coming up after this. I'll just do I'll just do it with some 220 and I'm gonna call it. Yeah, so uh I've just uh put glazing putty all over the whole the whole gam cabinet. And uh it's it's a good way to get rid of that all those wood fibers that wanna stick through and come out in your paint and so on. Uh it doesn't hurt anything, it's really easy to sand right off. So I might as well do it. Plus, uh, this skips a few sanding steps because that uh, belt sander dug in, you know, sort of deep. And this will fill in all those deep scratches. And I can skip right to, you know, 220 grit. 150 at first if I want. I don't know. And this stuff sands so easy. It's almost like sanding drywall putty. Okay, I did a very light coat of... Uh, Rust-Oleum white spray paint. And I'm just doing this as a guide coat so I can kind of find more imperfections. And I found many imperfections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and uh, I'm going to go back and hit it with a little more glazing putty in a few spots. Then I'll do one final coat I believe and then we'll put the side art on this side. What? Looks like that definitely needs to be lined up. Hey Kelly? Yeah? Have you heard the story of the hot rod race? Where the Ford and Lincolns were setting the pace? Yeah, I was there and I'm here to say I was riding that Model A. Okay, I have... I'm too lazy. Line it up! Line, make sure it's lined up! <laughs> Do your womanly work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> big whoop, you want to play with that? Yeah, big whoop. Want to play the bottom? <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm going to turn the camera off. Kelly's going to line this up. Attempt <laughs> oh, oh, to. Attempt to. <laughs> okay, so Kelly positioned the side art uh, where, where we think it should be. Um, so we measured 
the artwork to the edge of the cabinet to make sure it's square from the front and back. Make sure, make sure it's square top and bottom. Now, this came from uh, this old game, and he actually put an outline around the art. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it's a faint outline, and it shows you where the cabinet will be. You know what I mean? So, um, and he made it larger than the cabinet itself, which is good because, you know, obviously some cabinets may be cut a little different here and there and so on. Anyways, long story short, we're pretty sure we know where that art goes. So now, um, people will often say, ah, tape the sides. Well, this one I'm going to do. Kelly, can you sit over here? <laughs> hold on, let me... Go ahead. I'm going to hold it still. Go ahead. Sit way on the other end. All right, that way here. Right. Yeah, Jake, you just, just sit on it. Yeah. Turn it. Well, whatever, you can do that. All right, fine, you can do that. All right, I'm on it. All right. I'm on it. <laughs> All right. Stay still. So this one I'm going to do, where is... I had a little bottle of water. Yeah, where'd you put it? Now? I don't know where I put it. You're good at this. There it is. Okay. It's called hide the tools. All right. Hide the tools. <laughs> okay, this is what I did. I got about a drop of um, shampoo, and I mixed it with some water, and that is going to be my. See, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what they, what they call the wet method. I'm going to spray it on, spray some soapy water on, and I'm going to apply it with like a Bondo knife, and that's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to separate these. Hmm, scissors would have been smart, huh? There might be a pair of This one I'm going to do. I'm going to fold this under. Just like that. We'll do a simple one like this. Okay. So I'm going to get my soapy water. Spray the thing down. I'm going to spray the cabinet a bit. Trying to get all those water bubbles out. Okay, now you can get off it, Kelly. Okay, so now that we have that, now I guess Kelly, can you hold the try try holding it up? Try holding it up like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll spray this. Trying to lay it down. Here you go. Right, hold that back so you're not blocking the camera. All right. You pull it too tight. I need you to just look up. There you go.
See these bubbles I'm fighting? I think it's actually between the top two layers, but just in case it's not, I'm uh, fighting them. I'm actually really curious to see <clears throat> what this is going to look like. Huh, where did I put that? Yes. Yes, that. <laughs> Spray some more. You know what? I think we're probably good to just lay out. I got some lots of soapy there. tell because there's a masking. Now the masking is good because it protects the art while I'm scraping the hell out of it. But sometimes it's hard to tell what's underneath it. If I'm removing all the bubbles. I think I am. I think it's actually laying down really well. I'm just over cautious and worried. Probably about nothing. Found my first bubble that's not coming out. Hopefully it's right on the edge. I oh, got it. Oh, it, it was the top layer. That's air. Yeah. She see it's confusing. <laughs> Still, it just makes me feel good to get, get it out of there. <clears throat> when I'm referring to air bubbles, I'm referring to the bubbles behind the masking, not underneath the vinyl, between the cabinet. I'm just, hey, it's hard to tell. I need to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. That was a little pocket of water. All right. Can't see it. Right there somewhere. Can I get it? You seem to have a better eye than me. <laughs> Make sure we got it all. Kelly's gonna look, gonna look around and see if there's any more water bubbles. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna get out my razor blade. I'm gonna cut off the excess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, let's say, one inch all around. And I'm going to cut the rest later. Now there's two camps and of, of how people do this, do the cutting. 
And I've done both. I think it depends on the type of vinyl. I'll show you in a minute. Some people, in other words, some people cut the vinyl flush with the edge of the cabinet. And some people will tuck the vinyl underneath the T molding. I myself usually, not all the times, but usually will tuck it under the T molding. And I'll show you a trick on how to do that. Some people say not to do it, and I agree in some situations. It really just depends on how the vinyl reacts, the vinyl you're using. But I'm just going to cut these extra edges off right now because I don't want that vinyl to stick in places I don't want it to stick while I'm working with it. So let me remove this masking. For example, if your edges aren't razor sharp, if you tuck it, it's going to look like crap. But also, if your edges aren't razor sharp, it's probably going to look like crap if you cut it flush. That's just my opinion now. Now I'm taking off this masking and I'm working it this way. If I were to pull up, it could help separate the cabinet, the artwork. And I don't want to separate the artwork from the cabinet. Go ahead, get it. That is looking beautiful. Look how vibrant that colors, those colors look. All right, so I'm gonna get my heat gun. I'm gonna heat underneath here. Then I'm gonna pull it underneath the team molding groove. Now that I have heated it up and bent over the edge, I'm just going to get a razor blade and stick it right inside the team molding groove and go down the line. And now the edge will be hidden uh, by the team molding. Team molding will cover it up. So my wife is going around the cabinet cutting everything. Now, um, you may say, hey, well, it's, it, 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 that's not how Atari did it and so on. Well, I'll tell you my reason why I fold it under like this. Um, the reason why is because I think it looks good if, if done right, which uh, this is so-so. But um, the reason number two and the major reason is vinyl shrinks. There are several cabinets. Uh, for example, Omega Race. Have you ever seen an original Omega Race cabinet and the side art has shrunk an inch all around? Well, what's going to happen 10, 12, 20 years from now when you cut your side art flush and then it shrunk all the way around? I don't know what Atari used, but obviously they don't make that anymore. And there's so many different side art companies that use so many different types of vinyl. I mean, I don't know. I mean, does anyone really know if their vinyl is going to shrink 20, 30, 10, 5 years from now? I don't know. 
That's my thought. I always figure, well, if it shrinks, <laughs> there's there's got some uh, leeway here for when it uh, shrinks. Maybe it'll tighten itself up or something, or maybe it'll hold its own. I don't know. Just a thought. Thinking out loud. Okay. This side is now on. Looks great. And this is the other side. This is the original side. Now one thing I noticed about the original side is you see this pink line? It goes underneath the orange line then it goes over the orange line, right? It does that here too and it does that here too. Now the uh, side art, the repro side art, it does that here, it goes under the orange line then over the orange line, but down here it does not. It goes underneath both orange lines. And over here it goes underneath both orange lines. So, I mean, hey, you know, I can't, I can't expect, it, expect everything to be perfect. And uh, one thing that always bothered me about repro art, with, with all, all across the board, every single one, is the texture. You never always get the same texture. And I realize that not, that this, the, the, this, this, this exact vinyl has not been made for 30, 40 years. So I get it. I do get it. But originally it was a wood grain, like uh, Cinematronics cabinets. See how that has like a wood grain? I don't know if you can tell in the camera or not. There's like a wood grain. And there really is no uh, white vinyl wood grain that they make today, as far as I know. But all in all, despite me bitching, I'm actually very happy. I think it looks great. The colors look great. Colors, I, you know, if I were to clean up the other side, I'd say these colors are probably dead, dead on. I do like. Okay, I left it sit outside in the sun all damn day. And uh, all those bubbles are gone. I kind of figured they would. It all depends if the bubble is, if it's an air bubble or if it's a water bubble. It seems like the water bubbles disappear on their own. And if there's an air bubble, sometimes you got to poke it with a needle. But yeah, it is looking beautiful. So, now, oh, Kelly actually swept the floor a little bit in here. <laughs> so, I'm going to push myself. Tonight, really, we'll, we will do the body work on the other side. Okay, we are now on the other side. Sanded it. And Kelly's put some wood glue down. <laughs> Can't have enough. Reminds me of like those commercials where they make like chocolate bars or something. <laughs> Troy Hershey's the finest bullshit of all. You sure they say the finest bullshit? <laughs> yes.
You know, I was telling the boys today, I said, uh, I remember when telephone poles had a spinning disc on them. And he said, what the hell are you talking about? I said, well, the spinning disc would select when the stoplights would work. And, uh, well, William says, uh, <laughs> you remember when they had spinning discs on stoplights? And he says, Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> you know, from that Family Guy skit or whatever. Yeah. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And now I got that stupid stuck in my head. <laughs> I just think of the member berries. Member? <laughs> oh, I remember. Mm-hmm. Remember Star Wars? Damn it, South I remember. Park. <laughs> And cure, and we'll come back and send. Okie dokie. Okay, we uh, put Bondo all over the entire cabinet. So we're going to have to sand the entire cabinet. And down here, I put a layer of Bondo, and I, I hit it with a belt sander. So now it's nice and flush. There's no high spots that I can feel. So, uh, now we're going to retire the belt sander. No more belt sander. Now we're going to go with different grades of sandpaper on the sander here. So, hopefully I have enough sandpaper to do this. So we're going to sand all this, and then um, I'm probably going to, probably after that, I'm going to use some uh, glazing putty to get the fine stuff that, that I missed. Okay, the entire cabinet is now covered in glazing putty. Now this stuff dries really quick, but some spots I put it on a little thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to watch an episode of Family Guy or something. And I'll come back out here and I'll do the sanding. Well, we sanded it with 220 grit. Brought it right down. Very smooth. Zero imperfections. Just what I wanted to see. So, Kelly's going to dust it off. And I'm going to spray with some paint. Now, the reason I'm even spraying with paint, there's two reasons. Number one, I want to make this a uniform color in case there's any color bleeding through the vinyl. It's possible that you could put vinyl on and you know, if the, if, the color is, if the color is darker, it'll show through the white vinyl. That's a possibility. Some vinyls won't let that happen. Some vinyls do let that happen. Another reason is, I'm painting this and so, it, the, so the vinyl can adhere to it better. The vinyl will adhere to smooth paint better than it will dusty, dry wood. Anyway, so, let's get some painting going on. fly landed, or a gnat, or whatever it is, landed right in the paint. No biggie. When this paint dries, I will sand him out.
Well, I just woke up. I uh, stepped on a damn nail. There's a board laying here with a nail. So a nail just went in my foot. I haven't had a cigarette yet. And uh, if you're not a smoker, it might be hard to understand. But, uh, man, I need a cigarette now. And uh, anyway, so I, I'm, I'm going to start doing this standing. And my wife said she'd get me a pack of cigarettes. My poor wife. My wife has never smoked in her life. And she's out there buying me cigarettes right now. What's up with my stinky ass cigarette smells and all that? Damn good woman. Any, oh, anyways, what I'm doing is I'm wet sanding. This is that stuff. It's, it's that same stuff that uh, I applied the side art with on the other side. Just a little bit of of uh, just a little bit of soap in there. <coughs> just a drop of soap. And what I'm doing is I'm just uh, giving this a little light sand and wiping it off. The only reason I'm doing that is to get rid of any little tiny imperfections, little tiny high spots. Like over there a bug landed right, right while I was painting. Bye bye bug. You know, so I'm gonna go uh, and wet sand this whole cabinet. All right, I got my wife sitting on top of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> if you got a big fat wife, it's really handy to get them on top of your games like this. You know. Uh huh. Good for you. <laughs> Not everyone can be skinny like me. <laughs> so. So easy to get a little wrinkle. I, I think that wrinkle's high enough where it's not going to be affected on the side art, though. Oh, yeah. So do I. I think you might be right, though. Might be all right. All right. You got that water spray? Yep, I'm just getting it ready. And this is just water with about a drop of shampoo in it. Okay, you have the thing right there. Yep. I'm not the greatest fan of having the protective mask on side art. Because you can't tell if you got the bubbles out. Until you take the masking off. Until you take the masking off. Or whatever. Luckily, all the bubbles on the other side just kind of fix themselves. And this side. I think it's better than the other side. Alright. Uh, oh, yeah, let me get the spray bottle. Yep, pick it up. Yeah, pick it up higher so I can get in there.
Change your lay down a little bit. It's wet, it won't suck in a stiff. Lay down. Camera shows it. Hopefully you can make this out in the camera. You see I have a bubble here. So get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a needle to poke a hole. Now I try to get the smallest needle I could possibly find, but I'm going to give it a little pressure, just a little pressure on, the, on one side. Poke a hole. Can you see the water squirting out? Now it's gone. Okay, so now the cabinet is laying on its back and I'm going to do some body work on the uh, Front. Now, I don't know. I don't know if I put this on the last video or not, but I, I put another piece of wood up here, and I and it was about a half a millimeter thinner than this because this has an um what's it called? Jeez, like countertop material. I forget the name of it. Formica layer right here. So I had to build this up about a half a millimeter with uh, bondo and. I found something, here's a regular glazing putty that I usually like, and here's something else that says Bondo Professional Glazing Putty, you have to mix hardener, like Bondo. I tried this and boy does it suck, it sucks, it's no different than just putting thin Bondo on. The reason I like glazing putty is because it, it reacts a certain way. It goes on super thin and almost instantly dries. Like, let me show you. I can put this on. Look how thin it goes. And I can touch it instantly. The, the Bondo Glaze, the professional Bondo glazing putty doesn't do that. The reason I like how it dries like that is because I can I can stack it up, man. I can just keep on going. Not have to worry about dry times in between. I don't know, that's my little Guess that's my problem. Guess I'm not professional enough to like professional glazing putty. <clears throat> so anyway, this I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover this whole thing in glazing putty, and hopefully do one or two sands, and I think the front will be ready for paint.
Well, set of semi gloss in the can. I sure hope it uh, doesn't dry that glossy. Maybe I should have went with a what's one step less than semi gloss. Is there anything between semi gloss and flat, Kelly? Uh, that would be satin. Satin, that's what it is. I think I should have went with satin. We'll see what this looks like when it dries. <laughs> I don't even know. Oops. There it is. And now it's gonna set that over there, I guess. Tea molding time. <laughs> So Kelly uh, dusted the inside a little bit. Looks pretty good. Looks much better than it did, right? So I think I'm going to start cleaning the inside. You know what I mean? And maybe take out this control panel and so on. Um, that coin door is just sitting there for now. You know what I mean? I'm actually kind of curious to see what it looks like underneath here. Is it just two screws and that's it holding the whole damn panel on? That's what it looks like. Something else. Oh no. Uh -huh. There's this piece of wood that goes somewhere. And this feels a little loose. And I have a feeling this spring has something to do with it. So I might have to. It looks like a spring goes right, right here. I don't know though. But this feels a little loose, like something might be missing. I don't know. It looks like these are all, there's supposed to be springs all through here, maybe. I don't know, I'm going to have to look and see what... I might have to buy some new springs if we're missing springs. I don't know. And so, I'm going to look at the schematic. I'm not quite sure how this works. I, I assume there is just a contact switch behind here and just, that's it. Does the speed of the plunger have anything to do with gameplay? If so, that's pretty awesome. I did not know. Yeah, there's something, something funny about the way this, something's missing. So, um, you guys seen the original panel. And this is covered in dust. So here's the original panel, right? Can you give me that paper towel right there, Kelly? Okay. This is covered in dust. It's still covered in dust. But, you get the point. It's still covered in dust. Jeez, it's like super dust. All right, here we go. <laughs> Anyways, that's a reproduction. Yeah, I bought that off, off of someone on Facebook. I forget their name, I'm sorry. But uh, this is a reproduction, I believe, made by this old game. Anyways, out with the old, in with the new. Check it out. I like, I like. So that's going to be on there at some point. But I think I need to worry about what's going on. I think there's missing springs or something's not right. We'll figure it out. The uh, bezel is taken off now. It was uh, just one bracket right here. Look how filthy that is inside. I don't know if you can see, but right upside down right there, that is the 
the play field. And I want to hopefully take it out if it's easy enough to clean it. And uh, it's pretty cool. I didn't expect this. I don't know what I expected, I guess. I mean, that's just one giant PCB. So I'm going to take off this plug. And let me move this. It looks like there were staples, but they were staples were already pulled up. I don't want to force it. Kelly, does it come out the back maybe? Um, I don't think it was We're in no hurry. Yeah, all these are taken out. Okay, push. You just you don't have. Don't don't push. Just hold just it up like there. that. Yeah. There it goes. Hold on. Let me move this camera back. not expect that to see a PCB. I guess I should have expected that, huh? Mm -hmm. so this is just cardboard. Plain old cardboard. And right here is the play field. How cool is that? Everything's written backwards, of course, because you're looking at the mirror image of this. So, yeah, even this is all paper, man. Paper we gotta be really paper. careful with this. Okay, set that aside. How do I get this glass out? Uh, that I haven't figured out yet. Ah, me neither. It looks like it comes out the back. I think it does, I just gotta figure out how. But now since that card. Oh, I see, there's a bracket. Okay. Okay, so we gotta take that bracket out. Now oh. let's take out that glass and One screw. clean the glass. One screw? Yeah, somebody else was already in here, it looks like. They only put one screw I figured someone else was already in there. Every staple was pulled. At least they pulled it with care. Yeah. There's no damage to the cardboard. Sometimes you get them and people are like, yeah. happy. I'm going to write top on there. So, you know, sometimes one side is silvered, or however you call it differently than the other. Okay, I think that just gets, comes out your way now. I, it's alright, it's alright. Oh, I broke it. What did you do? Here. <laughs> alright, wow, there's a lot of dust in there. Alright, I guess. Next thing I do, oh, maybe we could see what it looks like in here now. Hmm, hold on. I still haven't looked myself. <laughs> okay, so it looks like, yeah, there's just bolts. Yeah, I think they pulled through these bottom pieces. Okay. All right, let's take out that control panel. Yeah. Okay, the control panel is now off. And I didn't notice this until now. You see how this wood is separating? Well, someone had this out before. Uh, oh, well, you remember that spring I found? I think I have it in my pocket now. Remember that spring I found? Look at the back. Here's where the springs are supposed to go. And, and look at this. This spring is different. This is the spring that you would see on, like, here, I think, isn't it? Am I crazy? Isn't it like the spring goes on the front? I need to look at some pictures online and see what these machines are supposed to look like. But evidently, there's this hinge right here, and it hinges on that. These springs resist, and a piece of metal goes through here. When you press down and 
connects this contact and that would give you the shake the machine kind of tilt thing you know what I mean so um, it looks like I'm gonna have to fix this wood glue it back together staple it or something and uh, get some new hardware from the hardware store and and put washers on here because there's no washers and there has to be washers look they would it wouldn't leave the factory with a just a nut on the end there has to be a washer there anyways um, some of these bolts that hold this onto the hinge pulled right through the cabinet so I'm gonna have to put washers on the inside of the cabinet to prevent that from happening again and whatever uh, also this is what the cabinet looks like right now you can see these holes now some of these holes have been yanked right through there should have been some sort of washers there but yeah um, I'm just gonna move on and we're gonna we're gonna end this video right here and um, you know stay tuned for part three uh, thanks for watching please subscribe if you can um, have a good one guys